we want to say good evening to everyone. Thank you for tuning in and uh, listening and watching. We trust that uh, God will speak to you uh, this day, give you words from heaven that will uh, enlighten your way, bless you, and uh, cause you to rise up and be stronger in him. Amen. That's what we're all after is to become stronger in the Lord. Uh, Daniel eleven thirty two tells us this, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Well, I'm excited about the strong exploits that God has in store for me and you both, praise God. We read it in the uh, Bible, uh, how that many men, women of old, patriarchs, uh, people of faith, uh, they did exploits for God. And so God's not changed. He's still the same today. He's still the God that performs miracles. And he displays his power among his people. And so thank you for joining us today. We want to look at something uh, this this day, talking about the reason for the incarnation. Now, we're upon the Christmas season. I guess we could say the Christmas season is already upon us. The, how quickly they roll around from year to year. And so we want to look look at this uh, topic, the reason for the incarnation. Now, we know the word incarnation is simply uh, the meaning of God became becoming a, a human being. You see, uh, God incarnate. Uh, it's when deity united with humanity. I can't think of any better way to say it. It's when deity joined with humanity. And so we want to talk some things now uh, this evening about how come it had to be that way. That was the plan of God for it to be that way. And uh, so we thank God for his plan. Uh, he's an awesome God with an awesome plan. But uh, in the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, we, uh, we read this. This is where Adam and Eve is in the garden. And uh, the uh, serpent, the devil, of course, he is in there. He has got in the garden. Apparently, Adam uh, dropped the ball and uh, didn't. Uh, he let his guard down, and the serpent got in there. And he's the deceiver. And so he deceived uh, Eve. The Bible says Eve was deceived in the transgression. And uh, so what he did, he, he lied. Well, he's not changed. Let me tell you something right now. The devil is still a liar. Jesus said he's the father of all lies, and he's a liar from the very beginning, and the truth is not in him. You don't ever want to listen to the devil because you'll be listening to lies. We need to learn as people of God the truth because anything else is lies, and it'll take you on the road to hell. You may not... You may miss hell, but the devil can bring hell on earth if you listen to him. But anyway, in the garden, uh, Adam and Eve sinned by disobeying God. And that's what sin is. Sin is the transgression of the law. It's the disobedient, disobeying God's word. So uh, as a result of that, God is speaking to the serpent right here in Genesis 3.15. And he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Now, the word enmity simply means hostility. The word enmity means hatred. So what God is telling the, the devil, that there, there'll be hatred between you and the woman and the seed of the woman. There'll be hostility between you and the seed of the woman. And don't we see it today more than ever before? There's hatred, there's enmity, there's hostility between the kingdom of darkness, which is the kingdom of the devil, and the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of light. You talk about hostility, hatred, uh, enmity, and uh, it's, it's certainly manifest continually today. But here's what I want to bring out. This is the reason for the incarnation of God becoming a man. In, uh, 
In Oriental languages, the term bruising the head means this, breaking the lordship of a ruler. Now that's awesome. You see, here's what happened. As a result of Adam and Eve listening to the devil, which was lies, they disobeyed God, which plunged the whole human race into sin. Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See, see, sin will always cut you short when it comes to God and his glory. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But then over in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. You see, sin pays wages. That's why now we want to repent. We want to change from a sinner and get under the blood of Jesus and be born again. And so when God washes our sins away and forgives us, we experience a new birth. We become a new creation. We no longer are sinners. We then get on God's team and we become winners, praise God. Now, that doesn't mean we're perfect, but we don't have a heart to sin anymore because we have a new heart. We're a new creation. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's what the purpose of the incarnation was. Jesus Christ had to become our Lord. Amen? If Jesus is not your Lord today, he can be. And that's the only way to everlasting, eternal life in the world to come, but also in this world. See, when we accept Jesus as our Savior and make him our Lord, we start experiencing that eternal life within. No one can explain it to you. But once you experience it, you know it. Hallelujah. It's real, praise God. But you have to experience it. And so the, uh, the incarnation is what brought about uh, this redemptive plan that God has, even, even before the beginning of time, he had a plan in his mind uh, to redeem man. You see, because he already knew the man was going to make the wrong choice. See, our God is an awesome God. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. And uh, that's, why, that's why we want to make him our Lord. He knows what's going on. He'll take care of his own, praise God. So, uh, He's telling uh, the serpent in the garden that uh, I'm going to put enmity or hostility or hatred between uh, the seed of the woman and your seed, and uh, you're going to bruise his heel, but the seed of the woman is going to bruise your head. Now, let me say it again. It bears repeating. He's saying that Jesus is coming to earth. God is prophesying before he came to earth, he prophesied, he said it, he spoke it. Before God can do anything, he has to say something. If God wants to do something, he has to say something. If me and you want to do something for God, we've got to get the words in our heart and in our mouth. We've got to confess God's word so that we can walk it out and work it out and God can perform it for us. That's the way creation began. That's the way creation is continuing to be. We can create our own world by God's word. See, God's word is creative power. And so he's telling there that uh, I'm going to become a man and I'm going to be called Jesus and I'm going to bruise the head of the serpent. Now, what did we say that means? In Oriental languages, bruising the head means this, breaking the lordship of a ruler. Isn't that awesome? That's for the purpose. That's why Jesus came. That's the purpose of the incarnation. Jesus became a man to break the lordship of the ruler Satan. I want to make the, I like to make things as simple as I can so you can understand it. Why did he have to do this? Well, we read it in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, that God created Adam and Eve after he created a place for them. He created the earth and everything for them. And then he made man and he formed him out of the dust of the ground and he breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and a speaking spirit, just like God. We're made in his image, just like God. The Bible says we're made just like God in his image. 
And so because of transgression and sin, man became separated from God. See, sin will always separate anybody from a holy God. And that's what took the blood of Jesus to redeem us. Well, so uh, man became separated. And whenever man sinned, he took that God-given authority. See, God gave man dominion and authority in this earth. And he said, I give you dominion on the earth. You rule and reign in this life. You have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over everything here in this earth. You're, you're the ruler of this world. It's what he, what he was really saying to, to Adam and Eve. But he said, there's one tree in the garden right in the middle. I put it there for you to remember who I am and who you are in me. And as long as you don't eat the fruit of that tree, then you'll remember who I am. I'm your God, and that's my tree. But if you eat of that, you have just sinned and transgressed because that's my tree. You got all these other trees all over here. You can eat from anything, but don't eat that tree. Well, you know how sometimes curiosity, you remember curiosity killed the cats, what I've been told. Well, you could say Adam and Eve's curiosity got them in trouble, didn't it? And so it, it brought a need for a Redeemer. And the only way we could have a Redeemer was through the Incarnation. God had to become a man. And he did. And his name? Jesus. Jesus, the man, Christ Jesus. It's in the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 said there's one God. There's one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Simple as that. Other scriptures let us know that Jesus was a man. Oh yeah, he was God, but he was also a human being. John 1, 14, the word became flesh. Jesus is the word. Read the first chapter of John, the whole chapter, and you'll see, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. In four, verse 14, the word was made flesh. Jesus, the Word, became a flesh man, robed in flesh, just like you and me. He was in all points tempted as we're tempted, yet he never sinned. And now that's why he's our pattern. He's the author and finisher of our faith. According to Hebrews 12, if we'll look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, he'll finish the work. He'll finish our faith when we finish our life here on earth. And we'll go home and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Praise God. So anyway, Jesus bruised the head of the ruler. At that time, Satan was the ruler because Adam handed it over to him. Let me say it again, make myself clear. Adam was given dominion on the earth, but when he sinned, he took it and gave it to the devil. That's what the devil wanted. See, the devil wasn't just interested in getting Adam and Eve to disobey God. The devil comes to steal, kill, destroy. Look it up in John chapter 10, verse 10. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal that God-given authority and dominion from Adam and Eve. And he stole it through lying to them. And he'll steal anything from you if you'll listen to his lies. That's the truth, the whole truth. You can find it in the word of truth. But Jesus came. Thank God Jesus came. And he destroyed the works of the devil. He broke the lordship of the ruler Satan. And that's why now when you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he becomes the Lord of your life. Amen. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. Paul said, if we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus... In other words, what he's saying, if we will confess Jesus is my Lord, and if we'll believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. For with the heart man believes. See, the believer, your believer is your heart. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, to get in the family of God, it takes the heart of man and the mouth of man. It takes your heart and your mouth, your mouth and your heart working together together, there's where God's creative power begins, in your heart and in your mouth. Glory to God. If you'll take the Word of God, put it in your mouth, 
Get it in your heart. It'll start working. Miracle working wonders for you. Praise God. And that's what the incarnation is all about. Hallelujah. We read uh, in 1 John 3, 8, For this purpose, for this purpose was Jesus, the Son of God, manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, that's just another way of saying he broke the lordship of Satan, this ruler on earth. See, see, God only does things legally. Satan will do things anyway. Satan will do things fraudulently. He will lie and do any cheat, connive, anything he can do to get his way. That's the way the devil operates. Don't be caught up in his trap. God only operates the truth way. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me, Jesus, the Word. He's the only way. And so he's the truth, and you can always believe him. And thank God he was, he was manifested in the flesh so he could destroy the works of the devil. Now, some people can't figure it out. They think, well, if Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, why in the world is How come there's so much hell on the earth? Here's why. You see, Jesus came and he destroyed the works of the devil. He paralyzed him. He uh, broke the lordship of the ruler Satan. And then he told his disciples when he's finished, about the age of 33 years old, when he walked on this earth, he told his disciples, I'm fixing to go back to heaven to my father. And it's going to be advantageous to you. It's going to be expedient to you. It's to your advantage that I do this. And of course, they didn't understand it at the moment. But he said, when I go to the father, we're going to send another one. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because they don't, they don't see him. They don't know him, but you know him. For he dwells with you, and he shall be in you. So Jesus is telling them, when I go to heaven, we're sending the Holy Spirit. Now, you do know this, don't you? The third person of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, Holy Spirit, three in one. The only person on earth of the Godhead now, today, is the Holy Spirit. And that's why when you're born into the kingdom of God, the Bible says you must be born of the Spirit of God. Now, Jesus talked about this in John chapter 3, in verse 3, and then on down verse 5. He told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot see. See, don't try to figure out God if you haven't been born again. You won't see it. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5 says, if except a man be born of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Why? Because it takes the Spirit of God to take you into the kingdom and the things of God. Hallelujah. There's another verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 that tells the same thing. Verse 9 says, I has not seen nor ear has heard, neither has entered into the heart of things the uh, the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And verse 10 says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Praise God. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. In fact, that's how Jesus became a man. The angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, Hail, highly favored among women, Mary. You're going to conceive and bring forth a son. And his name's going to be called Jesus. And he's going to save his people from their sins. And she said, How could this be? I'm a virgin. How can this be? And the angel Gabriel gave her the answer. How it's going to be. And it's nothing's changed. It's still the same today. How's things going to be for me with God? The same way. How's, how's God going to do things for you? The same way he did things through Mary. And Gabriel answered her and said, The Holy Ghost will come upon you. And that holy child, that holy word that shall be born of you will be the Son of God, be called his name be called Jesus. And so how's it going to be? Zechariah said the same thing in Zechariah 4, 6. It's not by might. It's not by power. 
but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Praise God. It's by the Holy Ghost. It's by the Spirit of God. Always has been, always will be. So back to the question. If Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, if he broke the lordship of a ruler, why is the devil so freely up work, working on earth? You see, the devil has a legitimate lease on this earth. He has a lease on this earth because Adam gave it to him through transgression. But Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, and he sent the Holy Spirit so that we could be birthed into the church, the body of Christ, and we could walk it out by the power of the Spirit and live above the dominion of the devil. See, we have to walk it out by the power of the Spirit. Jesus worked it out when he was on earth, and now the church has to walk it out after the new birth by the power of the Spirit. We have to walk it out. God's already worked it out. Me and you are walking it out. Do you get that? Praise God. And we can do all things through Christ, the anointed one, and his anointed who strengthens us. Praise God. We can do all things. And you believe you me, it's only through Jesus we can do it. For Jesus said in John chapter 15, he said, without me, you can do nothing. So I've learned you don't even try to do anything for God without calling on Jesus and the help of the Spirit. And when you call on them, they're very present help in time of need. So praise God. Thank God for the reason for the incarnation. Aren't we so thankful that uh, God became a man, his name was Jesus, so that we could walk out the work that Jesus already accomplished through redemption. He defeated the devil. He bruised the head or he broke the lordship of Satan. And see, that's why now when we are born again, we confess Jesus as our Lord. When we confess Jesus as our Lord, we renounce the lordship of Satan and we give Jesus the right to be our Lord. If you haven't done that today, this is the time to do it. Strongly encourage you. Just call on the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says if you'll call on his name, you'll be saved. And just do what we said earlier. Go ahead right now. Just confess Jesus as your Lord. Say, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord right now. I'm tired of the lordship of Satan. I renounce Satan and his demonic activities in my life. I welcome you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me because I have sinned and come short of your glory. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Make me a new creation. Fill me with your spirit. Teach me your word. Teach me how I can live in victory above the works and dominion of Satan. Thank you for saving me today. Thank you for making me new. From this day forward, I'll never be the same again. If you prayed that prayer, we want to congratulate you. Praise God, you're a new person. Now you need to find you a good home church where you can be taught the Word of God and you can have fellowship with other believers. So we strengthen each other and we encourage each other. The Bible teaches us that. Uh, if you want to come visit us, we're over on the boulevard. You know what I mean by that? We're in Shelbyville, 1000 Colorado Boulevard, Shelbyville, Tennessee. And we're here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, and we're here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Please come and join us. Come and visit us. Ex tell us about your experience with, with, uh, with God, and we'll look forward to seeing you. Until next time, God bless you, and may God's grace surround you. In Jesus' name, amen.